Um, all right, so I promise to provide a summary of this uh, in internationally curricular project that we initiated last ECSS. And uh, uh, somehow hoping that we would already, say, already have some kind of a written report on this at this point, but, but we don't. So I just kind of, uh, um, you know, introduced to the data and, and the observations based on the data. And, and, and uh, wait, you know, wait, wait, wait for your comments. So, so the background was the last ECS, the theme of this workshop was interdisciplinarity or informatics and interdisciplinarity. So many aspects we had. A, um, okay, now I wish I had a program here, but we had like a societal aspect, I think, some kind of societal impact, which was, I think, Martin Glintz was leading that. And anyway, we had, we had many tracks there. And, uh, and then um, there was somehow discussion after this, as a follow-up to this meeting. So now we had discussed many aspects of uh, interdisciplinarity. I think it was uh, evaluation, teaching, re research. It's a very broad and complex topic. So, so what, should we, what should we kind of concretely do on this theme? So except as just kind of discuss and commiserate, commiserate about the complexity of, of, of everything. So, so then we had a small, um, I think we, and anyway, I, we had a small um, planning team, which uh, consisted of uh, Paolo Azzeni, Martin Glintz, Gerard Steinhardt, and myself. Am I still missing someone? I hope I'm not missing anyone from this list. And, and, uh, and Enrico was also participating in, so the discussions, what, 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 what should we concretely do? And uh, one of the mm, topics that somehow emerged from this meeting was, you know, what are all these um, like areas that are, you know, people coming from different areas kind of making use of info informatics in their teaching? And, uh, and there are this kind of emergent like informatics related curricula, there's bioinformatics and there is a business informatics and, and uh, maybe in others, a quantum informatics and, and uh, there's a computational social science. And so, so, so to what extent are these other emerging fields like, uh, let's say kind of informatics heavy as opposed to I know social science is heavy or bio bioscience is heavy. So how, how much of informatics and what type of informatics is actually con in, in contained in these interdisciplinary programs? So this was like the starting point, trying to try to somehow, well, it said here, can, it said map out the landscape of this current informatics teaching arrangement interdisciplinary curriculum. Both from the point of view, at least for myself, so to understand what is going on and uh, and also to see if there is something, if there's some um, kind of a, what, what's the kind of, what's, what's the kind of federation or consolidation that one could do there. So to offer certain kinds of informatics packages or uh, you know, modules for these various uh, okay, inter interdisciplinary uh, initiatives. So it says, okay, see if one can, could derive from this data some common models and or recommendations on how informatics teachings in an interdisciplinary context should be organized. It's a very open question, but one needs to, first, before one starts doing anything, one needs to understand what is, what is happening out there. And they're kind of optimistic the idea was the eventual outcome could be either a common informatics core curriculum or more like some discipline specific training models or recommendations. And Oh, now I realize so I, I missed uh, so I, the list of the planning team is there. So it's Paula Tsen. I mean, I'm Spark Demon from Kau Leuven, who uh, was, was uh, specifically interested in this teaching topic. But then he thought, well, he, he left this team, so he's, he's no longer at this meeting. But Paolo is there, and Martin is there, and Gerald is there, and Enrico is there, and Francisca Haufe, who was our, um, you know, Infants Europe coordinator also 
moved to a different job, I think, that's where she became a teacher, but no, Kit, Kit went, here is, you know, is now the, the new coordinator of this activity. So anyway, so we had this planning meetings, then we had actually a little bit of pilot data collection to see, get an understanding of the kind of ten preliminary understanding of the landscape, then we had a kind of a national associations meeting to, you know, you know, touch base, as the Americans say. Then we had the full data collection at the end of spring, and and, uh, and then there was supposed to be a kind of a report on this, but the report didn't happen, so I just kind of tell you the, about the data and the observations. But the report is still forthcoming, but it's not there yet. So, okay, so we, you know, we have prepared this survey form, was emailed to all informatics Europe contacts, about 30 persons, member departments, about 150 departments, also informatics board. So I think something like 200 contacts, I think, all together, with the request also to forward. Uh, we got uh, data on 65 programs, 22 bachelor programs, 43, ma 43 master's programs, 35 universities in 13 countries. To be precise, these are not um, then this, this all, not always all separate programs because a single bachelor program or a master program have, have, can have many uh, distinct uh, orientations or specializations or majors or tracks. So actually, the number of I didn't even count the number of distinct programs, but it's, uh, it's a kind of 65 specialization. We might have something like 40 programs, and then some many some of them are kind of further branched. Then there were five programs which were not really interdisciplinary, they were generic informatics, CS, maybe some electrical engineering. So in the analysis, I left dropped these five out. And one sub submission was discovered to be a duplicate. So the total final count of programs or set specialization was 59. Mm, it's a decent data set, but not very extensive. So, so um, okay, so I guess many of you actually were answering to this questionnaire, but, but let me still give us a background. So um, there's a bit of a difficulty about you, you try to understand all the different curricula out there. You know, they are, there's a huge diversity and a lot of, you know, web pages and in different languages from English to French to German to, you know, Finnish, Romanian and that. so. So one has to somehow normalize this data collection. So what we did is we tried to identify the fields that are covered by a standard OECD classification field of science and technology and the areas of informatics that were um, covered in this program by this ACM IEEE Computing Curricular Recommendation. So we have kind of, a, we were using kind of established taxonomies to, you know, to specify the questions rather than have very open questions which will lead an inordinate amount of data process. Uh, there were some difficulties with the taxonomy. So, so actually, I think I have them here. So this is this OECD classification. This has uh, six main major categories, natural sciences, engineering technology, medical health science, agricultural sciences, social sciences, humanities, and then subcategories. And even the subcategories are very large fields. So you can see all of informatics is there, like a category 1.2, all of mathematics category 1.1. So it's a huge, even this kind of the subclasses, they are big, big areas. All of chemical engineering is 2.4 here. So, uh, so we asked people to identify in not in not in a, not a single category, but in which areas in OEC classification there program falls into. And then we use in this computing taxonomy. This was a difficult thing. Maybe one of my observations, it's not immediately relevant to this data collection, was that this uh, ACM IEEE taxonomy, or what is called computing curricula, competence classification, competency classification, it has really sort of a, become rather bloated. It has now, as, as you, you, people who have been around for a while, they, they remember this ACM curricula is a little document, three or four pages, and, you know, this is computing. Now it's a 205 page handbook. 
and it no longer contains a single taxon, it contains seven, you know, con 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 inconsistent classifications, seven, or actually six. There's supposed to be, there's supposed to be one in data science, but there's not, nothing on the data science says in, in development. And, uh, and actually none of these other the existing six overlapping conflict taxonomies, none of them contains the area of data science, which is kind of a curious in this, this day. So we actually added, to, because it was, can be, could be foreseen that, you know, many of our intelligent areas would actually apply data science, the data analysis, but I mean, artificially added an ad hoc competency area for data analysis, because it was not, it was non, non-existent in this. Like the computing, the compute, the CS curriculum does not have anything called data science, which is, I don't know, peculiar. So, so anyway, so, so this is this the, the eventual. This is not any 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 clean taxon. I think it was by Enrico's suggestion, just merging the, uh, taking the CS taxonomy and then adding to it some areas from that could be seen relevant from the CE, so the computation engineering classification. So, so this is what it is. There's all the complex. This is one of the CS classes, CAE, certain electron, this is from the computer engineering taxonomy, etc. So I think most of the kind of three letter abbreviations are from the uh, computation instrument. Uh, uh, Computation engineering, digital system design, NBD systems, or HCI is actually from CS classification. But okay, it's not it's not so simple as that. But this kind of measure of these two plus the added thing data analysis there. And the remote people cannot see this. So okay. So uh, maybe I can sh show you, I can share my screen, can't I? Can I so I'm able to. So now the clean data is actually at the moment is in this huge Excel, uh, which I'm not going to start reading, but. Um, so there is the country and name of the program and, and the link to info page and, and uh, Whatever number of graduates, then this kind of this uh, classification, this OECD taxonomy, and, and, and so on and so forth. So, so, but, um, okay, so, but the Excel in itself, it's of course the important, interesting thing is what emerges from the Excel. So now I stop sharing this and I go back to my slides. Okay. So the respondents were asked to just, uh, uh, for each of the informatics competencies in the taxonomy to indicate whether it's required or elective or optional in their programs. Required means that everybody taking this specialization must study something in this area. Elective means it's a one of the small number of choices among which one needs to be chosen. And optional means that this, this uh, competency, whatever it is, you know, digital design or you know, operating system, whatever, is something that can be included. So I would say the kind of the serial um, use would be kind of this being identified either required or elective. And uh, so this is across all these um, programs that were covered. This is the number of required or elective um, emphases or weights given across these uh, identified areas. So there is a, maybe not surprisingly, so data analysis come out on top. Software development fundamentals, which is actually, I, I think it means programming, is comes out second. Information management, which is you know, databases and such is seven, let's, let's come on third. Then algorithms is mentioned 14 times, and internet systems, which I guess these days will be called AI, is there. And then visualization programs, computer science and software engineering. So, 
Um, surprisingly, I mean, somewhat surprising to me, I mean, even this very broad spectrum of you know, informatics competencies, I think almost all of them got a few mentions. There was one which was not mentioned a single time. It was, it was some, something like a systems resource management, I think it was, this kind of operating systems, systems resource management was the one category that was not identified by any program as, as, as of interest. But all the others got a few mentions, but uh, these were like the top 10. So then, uh, then somehow this OECD taxonomy was too fine grain for this small amount of data. So somehow it was very difficult to um, group the programs according to this OECD taxonomy data. Maybe by, by some kind of a you know, clustering analysis one could have done this, but, but then I just looked more into the actual contents of the programs, what they sort of seem to me to be. So, so and this is it's a little bit like my own classification, sorry about that, but so there's one program which was in agriculture and forestry, seven biosciences programs, meaning bioinformatics, uh, synthetic biology, you know, like basic biosciences, six health and medicine, which is like a medical engineering, um, okay. but, but, but more of this kind of this, uh, like technology type programs rather than basic biosciences type programs. Nine business economics programs, three programs which are data science, seven various types of engineering programs, um, ranging from materials engineering to various computational engineering. And, and since one on games, six various humanities type um, programs. I, I would have all the programs listed there, but anyway, so two on language and cognition, two on like law and like administration, 12 on media and communication, like uh, visual communications, uh, movies. Um, uh, well, whatever, maybe some web, web communication. One quantum technology and two social sciences program. So, um, so I, I was not surprised that there were so many bio programs and, and a decent number of media and also business programs. Personally, I would have been very interested to see more of these, let's say, social sciences or maybe humanities programs. Or more, more diversity would have been nice in the data set, but it was not really, not really there at the end in this data set yet. So, so then I looked at the, how this required was elective competencies. Uh, mm, well, what were the kind of the top competencies when you go by this uh, type of program? And again, I, I must say, I mean, there were not great surprises there. So this kind of a, this is the uh, biosciences. Well, maybe it's kind of other kind of algorithms, data analysis, again, software development fundamentals, which I guess basically means programming. By the when you kind of the written explicit definition of these competencies, it just says you know you learn to build systems at the elementary level. So there's uh, information management, computational science. Every, everybody has got less than four mentions among these, uh, whatever there are seven biosciences problems. Well, uh, then those the kind of this health and medicine, again, data science, uh, you know, data man information management, internet systems. Then a little bit more emphasis on signal processing, but, but only two names, so the numbers are really small. Um, the business and economics, non, I'm not surprising, the top is uh, information management, second is data analysis, third is AI or internet systems, then algorithm operating systems, programming and software engineering or three names. Um, engineering programs, not a very clear winner, but it's algorithm, computational sciences, and programming. Well, what would you expect? Um, media communications, graphics and visualization, HCI, information management, computer networks, programming. And uh, okay, so then, then there are a couple of these uh, 
classes where there are just a couple of mentions which I didn't, didn't list here. So, so, so this is basically the message at this moment. So it would have been good to have more replies as always when you do this kind of surveys and also greater diversity across countries and scenes. Now we out of the 59 programs that were covered actually 30 were from Italy. So many thanks to our Italian colleagues to be very diligent in answering this, this questionnaire. Um, and 10 from Finland. So thank you to our Finnish colleagues for replying. So uh, there's a, many biosciences programs. I think we have a good view of the biosciences and health and medicine. Media, com media communications and also um, this uh, business and economics was that represented. But then only three programs across all areas of like uh, non computer science engineering and only two in social sciences. I would have very much like to have a broader sample of this. And I already discussed the problems of taxonomies. The OSI taxonomies were too detailed to use on this small amount of data because the, the, the data was all over the place in this OECD taxonomy and this ACMI triple E competence taxonomy was surprisingly confused and somehow outdated. So I'm a little, I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was let's see, I, I was surprised about this. And uh, almost all of the influence competence, there is a few mentions, but data and the programming were the clear readers. Uh, there were noticeable differences in the responses across the Thematic in different areas, but the amount of data was a little too small to make very strong conclusions. And we are still wishing to prepare the detailed report. And I think, particularly, what we could contribute is kind of a summary and pointers to the program. So I think this would be a contribution. We can be list this, make a list of these 60 or so programs, and, and you can kind of some kind of uniform summary, summary, and you can see what is out there if, if you are interested. In. So um, so, so maybe the question is now, so if we kind of, um, kind of work more on this data, so what are the questions that one would want to have answered from this data? And also, do you see some kind of a, okay, so I say two, two issues, so, um, Apart from this, let's say, kind of profiling of this difference, um, kind of a theme, themes of the problem. So what else would one want to find out from the data? And then do you see some indicators as to in which direction to go based on this little data that we have? So, I mean, each of these programs, each university who has developed these programs, they have done them from their own starting points. They have own, their own portfolio of courses, their own local interests, their own local opportunities. And uh, there's not like uh, any kind of top-down direction of de developing these programs. Everybody does what they think is relevant. And they end up looking somehow similar because of natural reasons. But... Uh, um, but um, how to say it's, it's despite there being a certain kind of a commonalities the commonalities are not so strong that one could say that well actually what you need is this kind of model and we'll help you develop this model because everybody has their own perspective in in doing these things. So, so I'm a little you know, unsure what the message from this data is as to what the world looks like and how we could contribute to the betterment of the world. Uh, one thing that I must say, I was a little bit, what was a little bit a surprise to me was that that uh, at least in this data set, the diversity of the problems was less than I expected. So I was expecting, so you know, kind of crazy interdisciplinary 
from there was a surprise in the surprise in conformist you know what would more, more or less what you would expect then then if you like uh, very very close that were that were out there so and also okay so that was one thing and the other one that was a little bit surprised to me that the um that uh, that that the kind of the, this informatist contribution was somehow more somehow smaller and uh, like more standard that, than I would have expected. So because it's mostly, you know, it's mostly really, I mean, actually, you, it, it, this message comes across more clearly if you actually look at the date. So this is it's almost uniform, in, you know, the, the data. So we want some data analysis, we want some programming, we want some, maybe we want some AI, and uh, and then we maybe want a little bit of algorithms or let's say in this uh, engineering type things, you maybe want signal processing. But it was somehow, most of the times it was this, a little bit disappointing. It was the same message. We want uh, data science programming, uh, AI. And then a you know, little, bit, little, bit, little, bit, little bit of variance there. At the, Somehow taste, uh, maybe maybe databases. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So. Uh, Okay, so to my own impression is that, um, um, I mean, let, let's say that to, to me there were no great surprises in the data, except that, that there, except that the thing that there were no, no great surprises. Yeah. yeah, this is about what I want to say, so go ahead. Um, yeah, yes, yeah, so, um, so, um, humanities was like, um, like literature and, I mean, there were not that many humanities programs, so I can, okay, so let me see. So these were the. So there's information science, which is basically, I guess, libraries. Then there's kind of digital heritage, so these museums, archives, digital document management. And then I forget with what this one. This one was. Oh, okay, I guess. Now, if I click on the link, so the web page opens somewhere, it doesn't open here, right? Mm -hmm. So, no, it's not, it's not, no, it's not worth it. So, yeah, so. So complicated, so. But anyways, it's like, a, you know, digital museums, digital document management, and libraries. These kind of things. Yes, in digital humanities, which yeah. is like yes. Okay. Um, but I guess at least in these uh, archives and digital humanities, this data science is an important element these days. So. Yes. Yeah. And then the social sciences are. Yeah, this was, I think we didn't get a very good, I was uh, actually the social sciences um, representation was a little bit of disappointment to me because these were there, were, there were no programs in like a computational social science in this uh, set of data. These are more like, uh, uh, I, I, these are more like uh, the programs that were here, they were more like uh, how do you design 
information systems to serve the society. I think it's called some kind of information system science, sometimes called. But it was not like, like looking at social sciences data. I, I wish there had been programs of that type, but there were none. So sorry about that. So. And uh, as you can see, the great diversity of media, a great number of media. It's like the, uh, cinema and art, art and music, and well, of course, could, be, could have been in a category for us, but it was not so distinct from the media category. So, multimedia, visual computing, cinema media, so lots of lots of problems that direction. Um, yeah, yeah. So the information that one gets from this questionnaire, it somehow it's it's not very deep because you cannot ask people very complex questions on a questionnaire because they just don't answer. So we try to keep the questionnaire as simple as pos possible, not asking any any details about the course um, portfolio, which has asked sort of a, what is your area and sort of what, what competencies are relevant to you. And nothing about, you know, the number of credits or, or the contents of the courses and just kind of very simple questions. And even then, you know, the number of answers we got, this was not too great. And then one can go and look at the web pages. We, we do have the web pages of all the programs and so then, you know, do like qualitative analysis based on those, but then that's a lot of work. So, so. On the other hand, I don't think it's very surprising that data is more or less uniform because, of course, universities want to offer courses which attract students. Yeah. The courses which attract students these days are. Artificial intelligence, data analysis, even if they are not studying computer science. Yes. So it's natural that there is a convergence to yeah. something that is yeah. useful yeah. for the yeah. yeah. But I think one of the starting points was that. Um, somehow. Could one identify some kind of a module of courses that would be relevant to a particular, what I would call theme here, so, or maybe not even a theme, but like a certain group of programs that they, that not everybody needs to de do their own, but I guess people like doing their own. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so we or I can um, provide some kind of a summary of the data and with the, the, the pointers that we have collected and with then, you know, it's Excel as an annex if you want to do your own analysis. But are there somehow you know, questions that you think could be answered on based based on this data by you know, looking more closely into this. So we, we know the countries, we know the names of the programs, we know the level of the programs, and then we know these competencies. But we, we, we don't know anything about the actual course contents without going to the curriculum descriptions, which is then, then it was quite a bit of work. What would, what would you want to know about interdisciplinarity and informatics? I don't know, I don't know if this addresses your question, but all this leaves me a little bit alone with respect to, to the question, what are the requirements we as informatics people have to fulfill in order to train others in digital competence? But if it comes to some kind of digital transformation in sciences, everybody is applying machine learning yes. or something like that. So, and uh, what does that mean for us? Or what is our position to that? 
is it enough to do some data or digital literacy education for all students of all disciplines? Mm. Or is it more? Do we have to do more? How can we position as a discipline to that? Uh, yeah, well, what's, what's our position? Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know the answer right now. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, maybe you have to come yeah. closer to talk to the... Okay, so... Can I just give my microphone to yeah. help? to say that again that all leaves me a little bit alone with respect to the question um what are the requirements for ours as informatic pe people as, as, a, as a as a scientific discipline what do we have to do for other disciplines so if it comes to this digital transformation in sciences everybody is applying uh, digital methods like machine learning and all these and some some big data management things and um what we have now is some kind of common understanding of how to do data or digital literacy education for, for all students of all disciplines, but possibly it has to be more. And um, what, what is our position in regard of that? Do we want to do that or do we want to leave it to the others to, to we see that there appear professorships in machine learning and physics and geoscience mm -hmm. and, and, and so forth. And do we want to do that for them, or do we want to let them do what what, what they think what this is? You know. <laughs> so this is a little bit my, my my question. I think this was also one of the fundamental questions that you know initiate this this whole discussion. So all this, you know, do we need a professor in machine learning in X, where X is uh, business, physics, chemistry? Uh, humanities, or do we just need people who do machine learning and then they train? I, I don't know. How are how are these things done in your university? Are you concerned about the way that they are done, Enrico? Yes. Oh, I, I, I think that what we should do, based on on this set of data, which is limited but is a, a valuable one. And we, of course, we could always decide to try to enlarge the, 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 the answers. I think that what we should do may be focusing on, like we have shown in some slides, on sectors, health informatics or business informatics. I think what we should say is which are the required competences or knowledge area that are needed in that area so that the, 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 the degree can be considered a business informatics or a health informatics and, and so on. Otherwise, as Norbert has said, I mean, people will think that just to do a business informatics degree, it's enough to have some programming and some mm -hmm. artificial intelligence because now it's trendy or, or something else. So I think we should say, look, we understand that there are mixed area X informatics, but we think that either for some specific or in general, there are some key area that cannot be skipped. It's that, that, that I think should be our position. Then of course, people can do whatever they like because, but from, from our viewpoint, I think we should, uh, this is what we should, uh, we should say. Um, I think we had this discussion before, whether this is uh, about what informatics should provide. Sorry, Martin, let, 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 let's, yeah. Uh, or whether we have something like, I, I think we had this discussion before, and uh, eventually we decided that with this survey, we wanted to see what's around with respect to just interdisciplinary things without um, looking into, well, what is informatics providing? What do the others provide? Who should provide this? Uh, but just try to figure out what's around so that we maybe can draw then some conclusions from that. I think it's not about the discussion where the machine learning professorship should be, whether that should be in biology or in informatics. But do you agree with Enrico's idea of providing some kind of recommendations that for a bit, so, okay. Okay, so the next question, so should we just take our recommendation based on what the data indicates, saying, well, the business informatics degrees, they seem to have this, hence we recommend this, or do we put our own view on this, that in our view, business informatics should have something? 
I think that one one thing we should do uh, would be to look at how good is our coverage country wise because my feeling is that uh, for some country we have been able to do a better collection data in other country uh, there are lower coverage of data mm -hmm. so I mean I, I my, my my goal would be to try to draft some uh, recommendation but before going there let's be sure that uh, we are not overlooking some large country because then it would be i mean not not so yeah. not yeah. so nice so i don't know if you have some statistics about uh, by country i mean you said we have 59 programs yeah. and 30 from italy and zero from france okay so that's that, that then there is a bias then there is a bias so it's a uh, Germany, the coverage is poor either, so uh, yeah. we prefer to have a second round. Of yeah. <laughs> and the, I mean, of course, there is, of course, there could be a risk of never ending, but if, if there is such a balance, thirty examples from Italy and zero from France, then I mean, I, I would not uh, say this is a European recommendation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Paolo. Hi. Uh, yeah, I kind of agree with Enrico in the sense that uh, I, let me say, I do believe even more than Enrico that uh, it is way too early to make recommendations because uh, we really need to understand what are the goals of uh, these various programs uh, because uh, they might be interdisciplinary or be programs with a minor or variations uh, thereof. And so uh, I do understand that uh, it is important for us, uh, for our communities uh, to have recommendations so that uh, each of us uh, in his or her own university can, uh, I mean, has the availability of, of some instrument to say, hey, I have an international recommendation that says that if you want to claim interdisciplinarity with uh, informatics, then there is some minimum requirement. But at the same time, this is kind of defensive. I mean, I heard, I heard this morning uh, that uh, in one of our universities, some law professors are proposing a program that uh, includes some AI uh, with no AI professors involved or whatever. Then the point there, I mean, what should be our approach? To, with respect to programs of this kind? Should we try to oppose these programs because they do not have the AI competencies? Should we propose ourselves to, to contribute uh, to, to, the, 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 to the degree that is possible? Or should we say, no, you really need to have more uh, informatics and uh, AI from the point of view of informatics. I mean, uh, let's say politics, uh, academic politics uh, is always very complex. So I believe uh, that before trying to, to give a picture and way before trying to give a recommendation, we really need to know what is the status of the situation. And let me also say that uh, I am glad that uh, you got uh, uh, more than 50 contributions from Italy, which might mean that my action was effective in getting uh, contributions. But I'm absolutely not sure that that is a really significant coverage of what is offered even in, in my country, because uh, that could be biased as well for, for, for a number of different reasons. So I think that uh, we really need uh, we really need more uh, knowledge. That's point one. And point two, 
before trying to make some recommendation, we should probably try to classify our programs. I mean, the, the programs that we, we, we find in the sense that, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know which would be the, the clusters, which would be the classes for these programs, but uh, we should understand how we can differentiate the various programs uh, on the basis of the quantity and quality of the multidisciplinarity involved, especially the informatics multidisciplinarity which is involved. And uh, I understand that this is not really a strong suggestion, but I believe that if we want to be effective, we really need uh, to think more about, uh, about the issues and to understand the phenomenon in a greater detail. So if I understand the comments in general correctly, so there seems to be some kind of a support for the idea that we would at least look into the possibility of making like a some kind of area specific recommendations that in whatever uh, well I'm, uh, well business is the obvious target so in the, in, the, in a business informatics problems you should have these things it's it's not a quite straightforward task to make such recommendations but but um, but uh, I mean, considering this uh, Paolo's example of uh, like a, a law and AI program, which actually has, uh, I mean, if I understood correctly, it has rather light coverage of AI, it may be this kind of recommendations would be justified that they could say that, well, you know, if you are going to include informatics, so then in your area, you actually should, you know, include this. And then it's a different topic, different issue who actually teaches this, but you know, you, you cannot call something like an X informatics by just putting a one programming course there or one, you know, one AI, you know, introduction to AI course there. That's not serious. But, uh, and, uh, but then this, this classification of the programs, that is, uh, is not an kind of obvious thing. So, um, so one, one could try, yeah, just one could try to do that based on the OECD classification, but then one really needs more data because there's so many classes and the problems sort of all over the place there. Or then one should somehow try to group to do some kind of clustering of programs versus this uh, jointly with these OECD categories. And and this is just somehow my you know, weak substitute or proxy for the serious classification. I, I just really, I, I looked at each of the programs and, you know, they sort of uh, felt to me that they were pretty much sort of uh, somehow fell into these categories. But this is very unscientific and maybe it should be done, done better. But this, this is a little, non I mean, all, always these taxonomies, they are, you know, this taxonomy is difficult. Doing taxonomies is difficult work, so that's why, you know, CS taxonomy is diverging and because it's so difficult to create a good taxonomy. Uh, but we could definitely, we could definitely think about this. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, in the ideal case, we would have seven types, seven areas of interest or 10 areas of interest, which are somehow well justified. And then we could make a recommendation for each of these that in, in this area, you know, the, in, the relevant informatics competencies, in our opinion, are, are these. But, um, um, yeah, it requires thinking. Enrico, you, you have something to say. Yeah, so uh, also based on uh, um, Paolo remarks, my suggestion would be to plan for uh, short term to, to write a report presenting these results um, as a, a, a matter of fact, I mean, as a preliminary study and analysis of what is the situation, mm -hmm. providing the statistics, uh, 
providing the, 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 the raw data as open data to everybody that wants to reflect uh, mm. on it and providing this kind of synthesis that you have prepared, which is interesting, where for the program, from for the areas where there are more programs like you have done, we observe that there are some uh, some areas of informatics that are highly frequent, mm. frequent, and we, without calling them recommendation, just observing that the, the, there appears to be some common theme, mm. and uh, declaring that we want to do a deeper analysis to understand better the situation. But for the time being, I think it would be important to 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 to, to give back the result of our analysis to to the community because people have contributed that we we have to give them back but as a, a draft a, an intermediate intermediate report a preliminary report on the state of situation and then we have to work both on on trying to identify if i have understood what paolo um, uh, said the fact that uh, not all interdisciplinary program are equal in terms of their goal some of them are uh, meant uh, if i have understood to actually build a, a mixed profile others might be focused on uh, complementing a basic profile with additional competencies and the two uh, the two cases are, are 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 different one we should try to to understand in which way in our second uh, questionnaire we can ask us elicit answer from people helping us in classifying uh, things in, in 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 this way but this is something that we have to discuss in a uh, meeting online meeting that uh, like the like, like the one we did when we uh, prepared this, this questionnaire but so i i would suggest to to start in parallel with these two things finalizing uh, the outcome that we have got presenting the statistics and making the data available if anybody wants to have a look and then reflecting on how to we can improve the data collection for the second phase and then for the second phase we should uh, try to do a focused effort on those countries that in the first round have been uh, not answering because we don't want to have a second uh, second round and we will have black holes of yeah. knowledge yeah okay sounds like a reasonable plan it's not so easy to elicit answer to this questionnaire so you know what can I do? Yeah, but we, it, it, it can be done if you if you call people to action again and again. I mean, they... can you please fill in the questionnaire? Can you please fill in the questionnaire? Yeah, it was not a complex questionnaire. We I, we tried to really keep it as simple as possible. There were some questions originally about the credits and maybe some more detailed more details of the courses but all these were kind of struck kind of st st struck out and because you know you start asking about details nobody will give you let's just kind of ask, ask taxonomically so do, how much do you value this thing and, and do, do you okay yes just sorry uh, just a very quick uh, comment on that because i know that you know um providing sorry providing questionnaire to people is also stressing from both sides those one that have to prepare the question and then to reach people ask them please fill it in and to the uh people that have to fill it the question so in order to provide maybe uh, a kind of uh, data set of data coming from question which is distributed equally across the countries instead of contacting all the possible universities there that may have interests or that we think that may have interest in fill up this question and maybe it would be better to identify just a small amount of big uh, university in each country to interact with because in that case you have less noise in the interaction you focus on one specific university in three universities per countries that are very big that contains a huge availability of different kind of courses and that you can use a kind of uh, let's say a population that may be representative for that country because in that in that way you basically have a specific effort by involving only selected amount of university people and maybe makes the whole thing manageable and you take data 
that are more or less similar across countries. So if you ask three universities from Italy, three universities from Spain, three universities of French, and you select the biggest one, for instance, maybe you have comparing data across European institutions that can provide you a picture which is not complete, but completeness is not a matter here. You, you won't have the complete picture of all the university across Europe. So just choosing the university that may be a good representative for that specific country will uh, works uh, in a good way in good shape and allow you in particular to compare also results across country in a let's say uh, you can think of this i think one maybe you are, you are right that maybe this should be more targeted if we go to another, to another round so be even more targeted than post now so but one also could do is just try to by Google find, you know, think interdisciplinary programs with some keywords. And then you know, if you find something of interest, you send them a questionnaire and say, we are very interested to know more about your program. Can you please fill in this questionnaire? I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I would say that maybe try to, to interface with the local community would be better. So the, the association, local association, informatics association, association, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe um, instead of looking for this data on Google, which could be dangerous from one point of view, since we have national associations, yes. uh, maybe asking the national association to select the, the university. I see. Okay. Better. And then approaching directly. Yeah, by the associate, uh, okay. directly by the association. Okay. Sounds. Yeah. Sure. Can you take, take the mask away because otherwise you <laughs> Okay, so, so I, I'm thinking about finishing the report. And when we are asking uh, some universities to answer uh, this questionnaire, is first sending the report to say, okay, you are working on this. Do you agree with mm. this or do you want to add things apart from asking the questionnaire? But finishing first the report and then send them. Mm. to all those universities and say, okay, it's, it's it correct. Mm. It match your idea about, I don't know, biosciences or whatever. And I think it will be a great interest to finish it first. Okay. So there's still Paolo. Please. Yeah. As you might imagine, I'm thinking why this discussion goes on. So maybe now I'm saying slightly different things from what I said before. Uh, let me say that we really should, uh, we should really try to understand what is the goal of, uh, of this whole activity. And the more I think on it, the more I, I reach the conclusion that uh, the goal of the report should uh, mainly be to give our, to our colleagues uh, the ideas of what are the kind of things uh, that can be done uh, in uh, with various uh, different approaches and so i agree with the, the things uh, the last uh, two colleagues mentioned that uh, we need to be uh, proactive uh, in our countries or in subsets of our countries to make sure that uh, uh, we get uh, contributions from uh, universities and colleagues uh, who have uh, new ideas and new experiences. Uh, obviously, as we said earlier, we would really like to be uh, to have uh, a complete coverage. A complete coverage obviously is impossible. Uh, we need uh, to to aim at the good coverage to understand to, to get the good coverage we need to be sure what is let's say the taxonomy of models for example i was just now looking at the, the message i exchanged with my colleagues in the spring when the, the questionnaire was open and i realized that i had forgotten but i realized that i had to give some comments to some colleagues who had initially filled the questionnaire with reference not to programs but to individual courses 
And then I told them, that's not the kind of multidisciplinarity we are interested in now, because otherwise we will get uh, uh, thousands uh, of answers and they would be difficult to, uh, to collect. So we really need to make a synthesis of what uh, we have. And I confirm that I am available to contribute to this uh, synthesis. And then on the basis of this synthesis, to understand how to interact with uh, people. I would probably say that uh, we should try to, to reach all once again, but uh, I also get the point that Silvio was mentioning that uh, we need to stimulate, uh, let's say, interesting people to, to give contributions, and probably we should do both. I mean, had to have, we should have questionnaire open to everybody, but the, the local uh, national uh, organizations should be very active in soliciting answers from, from the colleagues and the, 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 the universities they feel to be more uh, active in, in the field. So, finalized the preliminary report on, on, on this data, such, such as it is, and then distribute it to the community and, uh, and uh, you know, try to be more, more proactive in, in getting a more, you know, good cover coverage of areas which are still little covered. And, and, um, And, and as, as was already discussed many times, so there are many things that one could try to achieve. But the one thing that has gotten somehow support is, is try to maybe find a you know, good taxonomy of the areas where this inf inter informatics in interdisciplinary programs is, is relevant. And then, um, either get a good empirical picture or make some, you know, community recommendations of what the informatics um, competencies in this area should be. Not in, in terms of specific courses, but you should have, you know, data science, programming, whatever is relevant. There is another aspect that you need, sorry, I just, yeah. That should, be, that should be, I think, considered with that. I mean, by analyzing the courses that are multidisciplinary right now available in the various country is good because it allows you to have a picture of which kind of needs they have in their mm -hmm. courses. But there is another aspect that should be treated because there may be some multidisciplinary course that wants to introduce informatics, um, let's say, uh, teachings there that maybe starts a bit, you know, they just have artificial intelligence courses there in one specific curricula mm -hmm. without providing enough basic courses mm -hmm. that are necessary to really understand the topic. For instance, if you have, I don't know, something in, I don't know, uh, in the humanities domain, okay? And you start teaching in, um, artificial intelligence because it's a trend topic right now. And you have courses about artificial intelligence and you don't teach them, for instance, the basics of, I don't know, algorithms, data structures. So yeah. the very basic thing of informatics. Yeah. What, I don't see the point of teaching artificial yeah. intelligence. So it's not only, a, it should, should not be only a recommendation of what are the needs of yeah. the various courses, depending on what they want to do according to yeah. the specific discipline, but should be also some sort of recommendation that comes from informatics domain yeah. saying, look, good to have these kind of things, this kind of multidisciplinary approach that you want to have informatics mm -hmm. within your course. But if you want to really do it in a proper way, you should also include that course and that course yeah. that are a basic starting point that you should teach yeah. before going through more specialistic courses like artificial intelligence yeah. and these kind of things. Yeah. yeah, these things need to be discussed. And I mean, I can just foresee, I mean, I completely see your point, but and I fully agree with it. I'm, I'm just, uh, Okay, there's something that one needs to think about because the more credits one tries to push on these programs, the more 
pushback one gets from them because you know there's a limited number of credits and and they wish to I, I think in many cases you wish to minimize the informatics part so that there is more credits for the whatever the substantive part and like it's a very it's actually when you look at the specific programs you you notice this very clearly that the informatics is somehow it it has to be there but it's somehow kept to a minimum so that so Yes, yes, so, yeah. So, anyway, so I think there was a, a, a good message from the community and more work to do. So, we'll keep one and I. Oh, get out. Okay, um, and thanks. Um, in my opinion, we should. Um, ask the uh, informaticians responsible for these programs. Um, uh, why do I say that? Because in my experience, most of the interdisciplinary programs are not located at faculties or departments of informatics. For example, um, we have some kind of um, a hybrid program um, um, in connection with um, a faculty of mechanical engineering, but they have their own computer science scientists there and uh, they have their own computer scientists at our um, uh, university of economics for example yeah and um, uh, they are normally not involved in our specific discussions here so what about um, um, coming into contact with them and uh, discussing these issues with these guys um, who are allocated within the second areas, yeah, for example, life sciences, for example, economics, for example, uh, uh, physics, uh, if, uh, with regard to quantum technologies and so on, and uh, talk to them and ask them and involve them in these questions. Yeah. Then one just needs to figure out how to do that. It would be very interesting to hear their view, but... You, you have to interact with the department. Sorry, you you need to speak with the department at the, you know, the, the department of computer science at that university. I mean, I'm one of these examples. I'm working at the department of classical philology and Italian studies, uh, running uh, teaching at in a digital humanities degree. So I'm not formally at the department of computer science, but I come from there basically. I have relation with the, them, and usually within the university, the department of computer science is aware of the courses that have computer scientists that are not in force at the department but they are running something so i think that the contact point should be always within the university to the department of computer science that is aware of the courses within the university that have informaticians working on different departments basically it's the, the, the most reasonable approach to follow because otherwise i, I agree that it is difficult well, this this this, uh, this questionnaire should be asked to the right people, and it was exactly what I, I tried to say also before. Uh, and the right people maybe are those informaticians that are working in this interdisciplinary curriculum because they have been involved by those departments directly, and not by the Department of Computer Science. But there is still a relation between the departments somehow if you try to run it up this kind of interdisciplinary curriculum. So yes, starting from the Department of Computer Science, I think is always a good choice to identify the right people to stress on the, on the topic. Well, this is exactly what I was saying uh, why uh, when I said that uh, we should be active in uh, looking for programs. Uh, uh, this uh, means that uh, we should be active in the community and then in each university we need to be active to, 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 to understand what is being offered. Okay, Norbert, yes, please. Yeah, we in Germany started such a discussion. <laughs> Sorry about this, but you know, hybrid meetings, there is nothing we can do about this. No, I just wanted to quickly um, agree to what Gerald was saying. So we in Germany started a discussion uh, that we as a Fakultätentag Informatik, Fakultätentag is the association of the Informatics Department, and there are Fakultätentag of the other disciplines, and we are talking to these Fakultätentag in order to, to um, uh, identify which competences these guys want to have mm -hmm. for their students. Mm -hmm. So we started to discuss with the physics 
okay. faculty have not, for example. It's slow, mm -hmm. the progress we make mm -hmm. in this discussion, but we started it. And I think this is also such a very useful. But you know, already know all, all these things as regards Germany. So what the, yes. we, can, we can just ask you. Yeah, okay. Next time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. There are many things of uh, interest and concern to us. So, what, what, what do the other areas need? What we think that they need? Who should be teaching these things? And oh, I think that it, it's not, I mean, even the answers are not clear. So, if teaching. No, it's, it's not clear that the computer scientists are the best teachers for, you know, computing for the humanities. Maybe actually the humanities people are, you know, better um, you know, um, in alignment with, with the needs than the kind of the, the pure computer science people. So, but, but I, I'm at the moment, I, this is such a difficult question that I'm personally, I'm, I'm somehow agnostic about this. I, I would, I would, my, my current focus for, would maybe be more on these competencies, you know. Try to identify what kinds of competencies are needed in what types of programs, and then try to make some recommendation based on that. I mean, this discussion about who should be teaching, it's, it's a kind of can of worms, and it's very difficult. And it's very also kind of a location specific. So one thing may work one in one place, and the other place something completely different might be appropriate. But I think these competencies are something that one might be able to give a, like a semi-objective recommendation. Okay, anyway, so that was a really good discussion and, and thanks for that. Do we still have questions on the... No, so... So now we are already in... Oh, 3.30, closing remarks. <laughs> Just on time. <laughs> so. So, so basically, okay, thank you for the day. It has been very always inspiring and, and productive, and we got uh, actually lots of concrete things, uh, I think, moving in the morning, and we continue you know, with the, um, this uh, open letter and also maybe prospective, um, you know, um, like a broader project in, the, in this um, in this in this area of um, like uh, op open open citations, op open biblio bibliometric tools, and there's good feedback on this. Uh, you know, very very preliminary analysis of data, and you know, Kitwan and I will produce the report, and we'll distribute th that, and then we'll um, I guess get back to you in some one, one way or the other to how we should set up the next data collection draft. So who should we approach and in what, what way? And definitely we should send them the report and say, well, here is, the, here is what we have. And, you know, we would like you to help us uh, improve the, the data, data um, volume and quality that we have. And also, also I think it was very good to have this message that that um, maybe the right focus is, is the competencies and you know, some area-specific competencies. Try to ident identify those and make some recommendations based on those. Keep things developing on, on a good track. But I, I guess the one question, so now we already covered so many themes over the few, few years of this collaboration. So. Um, maybe are there any ideas? I'm, I'm, I hesitate to raise this question of yet another theme, but sort of for the next ECSS, so any, any uh, wishes for, I mean, there's, there's, oh, there are all these existing things that are going on. So there's the open um, kind of a bibliometrics, and now this uh, interdisciplinary informatics still keeps going on. And, I hesitate to ask this question, but you know, what would you want to? And at the ECSS in Hamburg, so what should be the topic of this work workshop be? Norbert. Yeah, there was already a proposal saying the work for, for the digital transformation. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if the, oh, this is, but this is like the easy, this is like the ECSS topic, but this is maybe not like so much for the informatics 
national associations, I think maybe. I mean, the whole ECSS could be around this, but, but specifically this national associations. Yeah, that, that I, you know, of course up to discussion, but this seems like a very good topic, but, but, but maybe it's, it's a bit broad for this national associations collaboration. We, we had a, a, a survey with national association uh, where we asked them yeah. to list topics in order of, of interest for them. Number one was interdisciplinarity, number two was research evaluation. I forget what number three was, but. We could, of course, take up research evaluation from the like assessment point of view. I don't know. Has been discussed many times, but has not been resolved yet, I think. Or we could go back to the survey that we did. I forget what the number three was there. Also, this interdisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity is very close to my heart, so I'd be glad to talk about like, assessing interdisciplinary work. But maybe this is just me, so. so. No we, we, I mean, the issue, the issue of uh, research evaluation, uh, um, we, we, we had the, the, the meeting in, in Zurich in, uh, 2019, I, I, I remember where, as Norbert recalled, we came up with a discussion, with a, a common statement. Uh, I think we had in mind to, to discuss whether we could uh, produce some better bibliometry tool. Mm -hmm. I mean, repeating that I personally am against the use of bibliometry tool, but they are there and we cannot avoid their use. So could we uh, see whether the various efforts that are done in, 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 in various countries can be improved and uh, be considered a kind of uh, European approach to do biometry in informatics? That, 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 that could be uh, you, you remember in, 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 in Zurich, we, we, we discussed that therefore the, the community of uh, the Spanish and the Italian community did on their uh, conference uh, mm. classification. And so we could start again discussing, okay, what, can, can we bring this tool to a kind of European level, a, a, something that may be changing what what we feel needs to be changed uh, so that it, it can be considered a, a good tool for the European community because if we are able to to to, to arrive at this point then uh, uh, in each country we would be in a better position within our towards our agencies to say okay look I'm suggesting that instead of using that commercial tool or the other commercial tool or this free tool that you don't recognize because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's dirty, it's not cleaned, please use this tool, which is not the tool of the Italian community, it's the tool of the European community. So it's, it's not something that, I mean, I, I do on my own benefit. I, I suggest because it's the state of the art at the, at the international level. I mean, we as a Europe can say we are, an international community. So one possibility would be to, 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 to I mean, discuss all together on uh, what can be done. That, that's, and it's an old issue, but I mean, we need to come back to the same issue and discuss more and more because I mean, this is the, the European integration process it requires a lot of time. I think that also aligning this idea with the existing manifestos out there that talk about assessment in general would be fine as well because uh, the, the work done with the conferences was great because we didn't have anything about that uh, similar to that in the past so allowed us to use some sort of ranking for, for let's say proposing papers published at conferences and not only in journal in a formal way but still 
it has a similar problem that has a, in the end journal impact factor. You are just having a value evaluating a journal and you use that value for evaluating a single person, which is not exactly what, for instance, Dora is trying to push. Dora is not against using metrics for uh, assess even individuals. What they say is just just avoid to use metrics that assess journal to assess individuals yes. because this is wrong. That's the point. So even come up with suggestion for do a more um, transparent and appropriate assessment according to the specific context you are assessing people, institutions, journals themselves would be great. Contextualized, of course, in the open um, um, computer science community that has some peculiarities that others doesn't have. Software, considering software as part of the assessment or the individual contribution of a person or of the institution who proposed that software is something that is totally missing that here not right now. But we, we write a lot of software, research software there, which is basically useful for our, for our research, but we don't get back any, uh, let's say, uh, rewards, uh, academically speaking, uh, in terms of career, for instance, for that time that we spend in developing software for yeah. research. So there are multiple, uh, let's say, perspectives that maybe stays at different layers that should be analyzed in this context by following, let's say, international mm, guidelines already there for doing good assessment. I was thinking about DORA, but there is also the Leiden mm -hmm. um, guidelines on research assessment that are still very useful and been done by scientometricians that used to work on that mm -hmm. specific thing. So there are different things that I think we should start to align formally with in order to do something that is recognizable at European, but also international level. So, the point is that in, in, in terms of declaration, we already, as Informatics Europe, we already prepared the two, two, two statements about research evaluation in computer science. The, the very first one was done more than 15 years ago, I think, and it was published in communication with ACM. Then we had the second one a few years ago. So uh, in, in terms of a general statement, I, I mean, I, I think we, we are already aligned with, uh, with this uh, international declaration. The, the problem is uh, when we come to practical solutions. So how to evaluate uh, uh, papers in, in, in conference, how to evaluate papers in journal, and also the, these new, newer items that you said, that how to evaluate software, how to evaluate uh, uh, data collection, collection of data. So. Um, this, this could be items to be yeah. discussed. It would actually be interesting to have, I, I know Gerald is asking for a turn, but just to comment, it would be interesting to hear some, you know, ideas about how to assess software and, 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 and data collections and op yeah. open science contributions. And. I, I think in France, uh, they, they are uh, quite advanced on this, so they, they have strategy I remember in Riyadh more than 10 years ago uh, suggested that for research, uh, for evaluation of researchers, uh, evaluation of, so of software should be taken into account. So, tell the truth, I have no idea how this could be done. It's not, no, it kind of cannot be just a number of in, in Riyadh too. They, they should have experience. But, but now, get out, get out, was to. Let, let's give the turn to Gerald. Get out, get out, please. We, we can't hear you. Okay, so now. Uh, Enrico, I'm a little bit hesitating to focus on this kind of um, um, metrics in evaluation, since um, uh, that uh, resembles me uh, to say, uh, we know that's a wrong way, but let's do the best uh, and do it in the best manner this wrong way. Yeah? I think it's, um, it would be much more appropriate to develop guidelines how to do um, appropriate uh, research evaluation in computer science. And that should include, as uh, was said before, 
the context of the evaluation, since evaluation has always to uh, be um, with um, regard to a specific goal of the evaluation. Yeah, so we need uh, to include the context, and we need to include. Um, um, uh, different artifacts, not only software, but for example, uh, some of our colleagues, they design um, uh, advanced user interfaces. Yeah? Or if you look at the Internet of Things, it's um, a combination of software and um, hardware artifacts. Yeah? Um, and um, um, we should also include um, research contributions to uh, solving scientific problems. If you look at uh, the um, uh, TU Delft, they uh, uh, recently have stated a new way of evaluation and assessment, and that um, includes um, research, um, um, which is published, but also um, uh, research results that um, contribute uh, significantly to, uh, to uh, society and societal problems. Yeah, and um, this uh, would be a, a kind of um, uh, comprehensive evaluation and I think to develop guidelines in this direction and to uh, find ways how to do this uh, this appropriate that uh, would be um, very valuable in, in specific I think uh, yes um, um, data and metrics they are valuable but um, everybody says uh, for example um, also uh, the Leiden manifesto they say data should support uh, qualitative evaluation evaluation yeah and if we develop a goal for um, uh, quantitative um, evaluation by metrics um, we um, it's my um, uh, what I fear that we will do then is uh, to focus on this quantitative uh, bibliometric as evaluation and neglect all the other aspects uh, we know they are important and so uh, I think it would be a better way to discuss um, um, appropriate guidelines for um, uh, a comprehensive uh, research evaluation in computer science and to discuss how uh, can, um, uh, can artifacts, uh, software, uh, all other artifacts um, and contributions to society um, um, included into research evaluation. And, yeah, and how can we convince governments like uh, those in Italy and Spain that um, not only um, um, that metrics and bibliometric uh, evaluations are not uh, the only way to um, evaluate uh, research uh, results and research outcomes? Well, I guess we could look into this research evaluation from specifically from this perspective, that it's not just counting publications, metrics, but these more qualitative things that need more qualitative assessment, which is like artifacts, contribution to society, um, software in broadly. And, I mean, I have, I have no knowledge of this area, but this sounds maybe something that's really good for us to understand because this is a lot of what we are doing. I mean, I also let me let me stress uh, one portion of uh, Gerald uh, uh, comment, which I really find very interesting. What is the goal of evaluation? The real goal of evaluation is to improve the future. It is not to uh, to give a prize uh, related to the past. We do evaluate because. Uh, uh, we want to uh, make progress in the future. So when hiring, we should evaluate uh, the record of people to make sure that these records uh, give hints on what uh, the individual can do in the future according to the specific goals you have in mind. If you evaluate a department, uh, you are not awarding a prize to the department, but you decide that you find found you fund a department because it can produce good results, and this is based on what the department made in the past. So, uh, so 
So I made one comment saying what is the goal and the goal is to go towards the future. The second comment is what Gerald explicitly said that uh, uh, you have uh, different uh, settings in which uh, you make evaluation, which is uh, hiring. And uh, as it was mentioned earlier in the day, for example, in Italy, but also in France, you have uh, two different kinds of uh, evaluations for hiring one is habilitation or whatever you want to call it and the other one is actual local selection and hiring then you evaluate projects you evaluate uh, departments and so forth and uh, each of these evaluations should be should require a tuning of the procedure of the things you evaluate and possibly a use of metrics. Uh, as well as many of you, despite being a database professor, or probably because of being a database professor, I don't like metrics uh, except as uh, elements to be considered, definitely not as measures. But uh, in any case, even if you use metrics uh, with all the caveats I mentioned, then there are probably different metrics in different frameworks, in different contexts. So, research evaluation. Yeah, let's, let's agree on research evaluation and we will discover exactly how to shape it. Mm. Because it's, uh, I mean, again, I, I, I would like to throw away all uh, Bibliometric tools, but I, I know that I mean they are there, so they will be used. That we have to defend ourselves. In, in terms, I mean, I I, I agree with with uh, Gerard's uh, position about uh, um, working on on procedures, but uh, I mean we should start from the two documents we have already produced because the issue of evaluation of various artifacts that we produce is a. Uh, is something that we already considered, um, so we, we should not uh, uh, write a report that say for the third time the things that we have already said. Otherwise, it will be a, a, a waste, uh, a, a waste of time. But certainly, what we said in the past can be can be improved. And considering, I mean, pragmatically, that uh, bibliometric tools are there and will be will be will be used, we should. Uh, try to put our community in the, in the better position uh, to, to defend against the misuse, misuse of, 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 this, uh, of, of, of this tool. But I mean, I, I think probably a good approach could be to have a, a, a meeting that I don't know if we, I mean, I'm thinking maybe we could have also a one day meeting in Zurich in uh, something around March, like we did in the past, because sitting an entire day and having a zoom conference is not uh, is not the best way of of, of, uh, of working and uh, since we will be uh, in the um, shaping phase of this uh, new uh, phase of work on research evaluation i think it might be better that we are all together in the same room and uh, and discuss it so this could be a proposal And okay, I, I used to say this many times, and I just expressed that I, I agree with these bibliometrics. They, as, as, as you say, so they are there and they have their place, or at least we need to defend our place when we are talking about the, like institutional assessment. Mm -hmm. So, then to what degree they can, can or should be used to individual assessment, that's a matter of debate. And as also as Paolo was pointing out, and Gerald, that. In individual assessment, there are many contexts. It's kind of a, is it project for funding? Is it hiring? Is it promotion? Is it some kind of work? You know, there are so many issues. And, uh, and uh, people are in very different stages in their careers and maybe different things are relevant to different stages. And so, so, but I, I would personally like to understand more about, because there's so much, Express, exp, express many times we should pay more attention to this more somehow non quantifiable things like uh, software, artifacts, uh, social contribution. 
So how does one go, go about this? I, I do understand the metrics, but I, I really personally, I don't really know. I mean, Samart is going to tell us about software assessment and I'm, I'm not, not necessarily now, but, but you are welcome to, you know, and, but I think we are more or less, this is the way that the think planning is going now. And Samart will just tell us how much we can about software. Yeah, so what they did at India is that they, as, as uh, Enrico said, they, they started thinking about it something like maybe 10 years ago or something. And the idea was to try to evaluate uh, the software production of, uh, of researchers. And of course, this software, uh, software is not the same as another software. So the idea was to come up with a multi criterion uh, grid somehow where uh, the, the producer of the software uh, actually run a self-evaluation saying that well this software uh, this is the size of the software with some relevant metrics uh, this is uh, the what they call the audience is it just for uh, an inner software for the team that is developing it is it for the, the full world of one million users something in between and so on so they, 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 there are some objective criteria uh, is it uh, uh, well tested, uh, so tested a little bit, uh, a lot, uh, fully or whatever, uh, what is the documentation and so on. So there, there, there are plenty of criteria for somehow define the profile of, of the software. And right now it is actually uh, implemented, it is deployed at the level of NIA. So when there is an evaluation of a team, we just list the number of software and we run the self-evaluation of each of the software that is there for the, the reviewers of the, of the, of the team to, uh, to assess basically and to check or to, 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 to quantify the production. Uh, so I think that's probably a good, uh, I mean, the, the, there have been lengthy discussion of what kind of criteria would be useful. So I think it could be a good basis to to, to generalize or to propose. And I think that it could also work for, not just for, for software, but for other artifacts, such as building a database or, or something, or even uh, there, there's been the, 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 the dimension of the internet of things. It's, it might not be just software, a hardware prototype uh, could fit in and, and also internet of things kind of, uh, of construction. So I think it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's, it's pretty good for that. The, um, the only limitation I see right now is that it's it's useful in the in the for, for at the team level, but as I've seen, maybe it's it's because it's too um, too too recent or too young. But we did not see yet any influence of that on the career of the people. So it looks like it is not really. I mean, it's there, but it's not really used for the evaluation of people and for the promotions. That's my personal. Uh, opinion on that, that, that just me thinking that. So this is not the, the, the consensus of, uh, of Inaya, for instance, but my impression is that it is not yet used because it's not so easy. I mean, hash number, it's a number. Here you have a multi-criteria evaluation of a set of software. You cannot reduce it to a number. Yeah. So it seems that people have trouble uh, for when you when you need to rank people for for assessing and for promotion or for recruiting people, it seems that it's not uh, used um, that much, I would say, or as much as I would love it. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we could have some, you know, more detailed, you know. Examples and my presentation is going to be nice about how to assess these more qualitative like things and then the discussion of you know, is there some advice that we could provide based on our understanding of these things. I mean, as you said, there's software, there is uh, data, there's contribution to society, open science, uh, all, all these things that are somehow not so immediately quantifiable. How, how should one assess those? And at least for me, this would be something that I'm interested in. I, I really don't know much about it. I don't understand the numbers, but okay. I mean, but, but let's get back to the lead. Yeah, but, uh, let, let, let me just to understand whether it would be okay to have a, a physical meeting in Zurich in March. I mean, 
Vince? Uh, March or April, um, Enrico, when the weather is better and we can sit outside maybe. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure uh, how the pandemic is going on. You know, I, I'm saying March because usually around March we have a meeting of the Executive Committee of Informatics Europe in Zurich. So we would like to avoid to move people too, too, too many times. That's, that's the, 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 the only issue. Um, okay, I understand. Uh, and Zurich, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I agree it's not Rome, but it's not so cold. So I can we can survive. It's, it's not Rome, but it's not freezing either. So. Yeah. <laughs> Do we already have a date? Date? No, we don't have a date. No, I don't think we have a date, but I mean, uh, if you agree, then uh, we will discuss in the executive committee tomorrow that we will suggest you a date. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. we yeah. So thanks everyone for again once again a very inspired this discussion. It's always fun to meet this crowd. So so brilliant minds with brilliant ideas. So I'm always amazed. So so thanks everyone. We finish at two four and uh, and uh, well I it's not not my uh, task to you know. Thank you for behalf of uh, ECSS and it was your office, the chairman's staff. You know, yeah. Do you want to say uh, words for just, 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 words just for the conference for this group? Yeah, yeah. Members. So actually, this is the, the, the last uh, the last session of this uh, of this trend of the ECSS. So I thank you all for being present uh, here and I thank you uh, people remotely connected. I know that you are remotely connected because you could not be here. So thanks for having fine time in your uh, schedule. And uh, I hope to see all you in, in Hamburg. Uh, maybe those remotely connected, the, the next ECSS will be in Hamburg in the end of October. And uh, of course, before next ECSS, uh, I, I hope to see you in Zurich in, uh, in this March uh, meeting. So thanks again. And uh, I mean, you have a safe, safe trip back and you have a safe trip. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Bye.